everyone. Welcome to At Home with Sally. I'm Sally Clarkson, and I have the biggest privilege in the world to be with so many friends from all over the world who join me every week to listen to my stories, inspiration, biblical encouragement, and I am just so glad that you're here today. Thanks so much for joining me. Hello, my friends. Happy Tea Time Tuesday. Uh, I am so delighted I'm I, uh, to be with you tonight. I always love uh, Tea Time Tuesdays. I have been getting so many letters and encouragements, and I picture you in different places, and it's just so much fun to be with. Well, today is happy birthday to me. <laughs> happy birthday to me. You may be wondering, um, this is the third time online that I am talking about my birthday, but it's really the first time I've been talking about my birthday because my children and my assistants kind of put up some other stuff. Um, But the reason I am talking to you today on Tea Time Tuesday, number one, is this is my day of celebration, tea times and fun times, uh, being with you. But also, I feel like a 70th birthday, that's what I'm going to be, 70 years young or old, depending on what you think, should be celebrated, should be marked, should be pondered seven decades. That's a long time. And um, for me, it kind of represents a little bit of, wow, I am moving up there. I am getting older. I don't have as many years left as I used to have to live. And so I'm going to spend today talking with you just a tiny bit about my 70th birthday. I wanted to read these two quotations. I have them at the top of my social media, if if I can get it all done tonight. Um, It's by Charles Spurgeon. It's about happiness, because I realize that as I look back on my life, on my seven decades, God has taught me almost every decade, more and more about how to be happy, how to be blessed, how to be content, how to be joyful, how to cultivate that in my life. And Charles Spurgeon said, It is not how much we have, but how much we enjoy that makes happiness. I think that's so true. I think it's, it's kind of the, uh, the parable or the story of the, uh, is your cup half full or half empty? Um, You know, I I think I've realized more and more, yes, this is a fallen place. Yes, there is fear in this world. But it is also a place where we see the remnants of the beauty of God. And and we practice celebrating that. We practice living into His joy and the reality of His wonderful, uh, delightful, gentle forgiveness, His uh, His shepherding of us, his fatherliness with us, his provision for us, his gentleness with us. And so um, I've been thinking a lot about that. I've been thinking about a lot of things on my as my 70th comes up. And the reason that I'm doing this today on Tea Time Tuesday is because on Thursday, my real birthday, I understand Clay said, you might or might not have a few cards that people have sent. So I'm going to read every card. I'm going to receive every call from my children I, uh, with, with great joy. I am going to hopefully see um, just a, a few very dear friends and, and um, spend some time with them. And so I will not be available on social media because I will be celebrating the 70 years. I made it. You know, I, I, many people know this about me, but... Um, I was born uh, in a time when there weren't all of these specialized machines uh, to help premature babies. And so my mom had a placenta previa. This was in 1953. And so I popped out early, and uh, they put me in an oxygen tent. There were no tubes at that time, and I was supposed to be blind. I was legally blind most of my life. I couldn't uh, I couldn't see very well. One of my eyes was 2,900, and the other one was 2,750. That's about how well I saw um, until I had a couple of surgeries much later in my life. 
Um, and so somehow I, I was born and I weighed um, almost three pounds. And then I lost down to 2.6 or 7 pounds. And um, my mom left me in the hospital and she um, would get a report every day about if I had gained an ounce or lost an ounce or how I was doing. But anyway, <clears throat> so when I look back and I think, wow, after all of the respiratory issues and pneumonia and um, all of the different things, I made it. I've had the best life. I've, I've had a life of resilience. And so I'm very cognizant of that today. And I like what Helen Keller said. She says, everything has its wonders, even darkness and silence. And I learn whatever state I may be in, therein to be content. And so I love that because that's, that's part of this lesson that God has taught me, to choose joy. As you know, I originally was going to name my blog, Go Down Dancing. <laughs> it was a, a commitment that I had made um, in my heart. I thought, I, I want to I be like David when he danced before God with all of his might. Um, and then, of course, Clay said, no, I think that's probably not the best blog title. Um, do something a little bit more neutral and feminine. <laughs> Uh, and, and so I won't I won't comment on that any further. Um, but anyway, uh, the reason that you saw us or my family mentioning this earlier, I don't always have control of my social media. You understand, but uh, various kids of mine came from all over the world to help me celebrate my seventieth birthday. Um, but they couldn't come on my birthday; they had to come. Uh, two weeks earlier than my birthday. So um, those who could gathered here and uh, came to celebrate me. And I promise you this may be the last time this year that I might mention my 70th birthday, but I thought it would be fun today to talk about decades and, um, and vision and accomplishment and God's grace and tea parties. But anyway, uh, I, I hope that I will be able to celebrate and give thanks to God on my real birthday. And um, seven decades, that's a long time. And uh, I do, uh, I feel like I'm learning over many years all that I just told you to choose to see those things in my life that are great. Now, there is a five-star hotel in town, and many of you go there occasionally. Um, it's uh, called the Broadmoor, and it has uh, two main sides of hotel rooms. It has things like swimming pools and massages and uh, and wonderful cafes and restaurants, and it has a little lake, and it has a big swimming pool, and it has all these different things. Well, um, a long time ago, when we were living in Colorado, um, I think we probably moved here about 25 years ago or 22 years ago. And just as life would have it, we didn't have a lot of family close to us uh, for most of the years of our lives. And so sometimes on holidays, we would be very lonely thinking, is this just another day like the rest of the days? So uh, many years ago, we decided that on Christmas morning to make it kind of different and special than me just making one more meal. You know, we just had the shepherd's meal the night before, which was celebratory and fun. So I think probably about 20 years ago, we started going for breakfast at the Broadmoor when it was much, much cheaper. <laughs> um, but anyway, we would, we would uh, eat and eat and eat and eat just as hobbits do. And, um, you know, some people who never during the year would ever have a biscuit and gravy would have that. And I liked the cheese blintzes with raspberries. But anyway, it was a lovely place to go, and it would take up our whole morning so that we didn't even open our gifts until the afternoon. It just made the day kind of special. Well, uh, we, uh, my kids decided that that's what we would do on my birthday. And so all of us, including uh, all of us who were here, including my three grandchildren, went to the hotel and we ate. There was a new, particularly good pecan roll that I love. I love pecans. It was kind of like a pecan cinnamon roll. 
But we ate and ate and ate um, beyond what normal people should eat and uh, drank our tea and coffee, depending on who we were. And then, as per usual, we walked around the lake and took uh, our traditional photos of our family. Um, We always take photos of ourselves at the Broadmoor every year uh, by some fireplace or some outdoor place and also in our hikes in the mountains that we do for Family Day in Mueller State Park, which many of you have read about in the Life-Giving Home and Life-Giving Table. But anyway, we meandered for hours, and we giggled, and we talked, and um, the the grandchildren um, were pretty good. And eventually, we knew that it was time for them to go home and play. (laughs) So after we walked and talked and took a thousand pictures and, um, you know, just did friendly things, uh, we uh, we came home, and um, the little ones had a, as their usual, nap and um, their quiet time. To the older ones, don't take naps. They they went into my little special room that I prepared, and they did stickers and and listened um, to Aslan on the little tape recorder, and um, they drew and they piled through so many books and. Anyway, they've learned to really enjoy their little time alone. And during that time, uh, uh, Sarah and Joy were working on one of my favorite things in the world. I have no idea uh, when I first liked this. It's probably in Asheville at an old tea shop that used to be there many years ago. But one of my very favorite things in the whole wide world is called an Italian cream cake. And you will see this cake in my picture today. I like um, nuts. I like crunchy bits of food, nuts in my salads, cakes, cookies, and most things cooked. I love variety of flavor. I love things that have dimension, if that's possible. (laughs) And so uh, the girls uh, perfected this Incredibly, I think it was four layers of cake, or at least three layers. And it has cream cheese frosting and pecans and a a bit of coconut here and there. And so they brought it into our living room, lit the candles, um, presented me with gifts. And of course, I had a lot of really generous help opening up the gift bags because my grandchildren thought perhaps they were for them. (laughs) Anyway, we had lots of fun and... Um, The highlight of it, of course, for me as a sentimental mama is that, well, first of all, they gave me some really fun gifts that were very special and personal to me. Um, A a pin uh, that was, um, uh, that had an inscription on it that talked about me being the, you know, kind of the life-giving words person that I can use for signing books or use in journals. I got some beautiful journals. I journal a lot. I don't ever want anyone to read them. Uh, They're my journals, (laughs) but um, I got the most beautiful journals, and Clay gave me a set of sound-canceling headphones so that on airplanes and in my house I can cancel out everyone when I need to think, write, or listen to music. Anyway, we had some really fun, special times, but the best part of it was on everyone's birthday in our family every year uh, when we're together, people... all are practiced at saying what they love about you or what they've appreciated about you. And in this case, my children repeated a lot of what I did during their motherhood years. And it is just so dear to hear um, your children. You know, I think that one of my favorite things about this practice on birthdays is that if you if you get in the habit of practicing giving encouragement, giving affirmation, giving very specific I love you and appreciate you words, uh, kind of like we talked about in giving your words book, um, then you will be a person who is gracious and generous at giving your words the rest of your life. And children remember good words. I remember good words that Clay has given me over the years. Um, Words have this way of landing in our heart and soul and expanding us, and it, it was just so dear to, um, in the warp and woof of life, and, you know, we have uh, lots of personalities, and ups and downs, and conflicts, and opinions, and we're, we, oh my goodness, the Clarksons are opinionated about everything in the world, but then to sit together, and to hear 
yourself being affirmed, my, and my children always had that too, and it's clay. It's just such a gift. And so they went around the room, and then, of course, at the end of it, they all prayed for me and for my future and for my life and for my blessing. And so it was really a very, very special time, even though 10 days before my birthday. And um, I, uh, I am just really right now a very grateful, grateful girl. I'm having so much fun being back in Colorado Springs. I hate to tell all of you who've been in the hot places, even though it's been up to 90 degrees and we don't have an air conditioner. Nobody in our area has an air conditioner. Few people do because we live at 7,200 feet high and it's a little bit cooler. So even if it's 90 degrees during the day, we put fans on, we open our doors, and we call it Camelot because every afternoon... Um, it seems to rain just the right amount, and um, it's it's lovely, and it's been so cool every evening, and we can all sit on our deck in front of our little fireplace and, and eat and chat and talk, and it's been so much fun. And actually, I have been so surprised because wherever I go, once at the Broadmoor, um, at coffee shops, in the grocery stores, I'm meeting more and more people who listened to my podcast, this really wonderful, lovely older woman, even older than me, probably by about a decade, came up to me and she said, aren't you the one who does the podcast I listen to? That was such an honor. I never knew that uh, all the different kinds of people who listen. So that's been a lot of fun. And uh, I just want to thank all of you all. Um, I I am told, as I mentioned earlier, that I might have a few cards in the mail to read on my birthday, and my regret is that I won't be able to thank every single person individually, but I want you to know that I read your notes and messages, I feel close to you, I pray for you, and um, it seems that lately I've been getting a lot of international letters, and it's just fun to know that we can be friends all over the world. Um, I had a, a really good friend of mine who has been to one of our leadership intensives years ago and who um, led uh, small group studies on my books in Australia. Met her in Australia many years ago. And she wrote me and said, you won't believe this, I was at a garden shop. And I was talking to this young man who said that he and his wife might want to homeschool um, their, their little bitty child someday. And somehow your name came up and he said, Sally Clarkson? Well, she's the mother of my old roommate, Joel Clarkson, from Boston. (laughs) So it is fun to see how the Lord brings uh, friendships and relationships our way uh, when we are in such a small world as uh, those who believe and hold on to these virtues. Um, I wanted to tell you about a book that I really love. I'm not going to cover all the areas this week because I have to go make dinner because it's Joel's last night at home. So we will have salmon and roasted potatoes and salad and probably whole wheat rolls. Um, And um, also, would you all please pray for my son Joel in the next few days? You remember that he um, won the composer uh, with, uh, he was one of the top winners in the composing um, uh, competition for a very wonderful group And they're going to perform his music in this concert, and they've invited him to come to be there for it and to meet some of the different people uh, in this group. And all I'm going to say is, would you pray God's blessings, God's goodness, God's protection, God's help in Joel's life as he tries to go from here to London to the tiniest little town in the world who don't have any taxis anymore. (laughs) And I uh, pray that God will bless his time with this wonderful group of people. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say. You can fill in the blanks. God can fill in the blanks. But um, we've been um, going to make one last meal tonight, so I have to hurry to get off of this so I can be with Joel. But um, the other day, Joel and I went out for breakfast. We've been going on these long, long walks up in the mountains. Uh, with Darcy's, and uh, we've been going about seven thirty, eight o'clock at night, and it's absolutely so beautiful, so few people there. 
We sit on an old worn bench that sits in front of a small lake, and we just have been talking as friends. And um, we're, we're marveling at this time of year, the artistry of God, and we're making memories. Um, and anyway, it's been just a delightful time, so I need to send him off well, as I sent my other children off well. And um, I've, I've really realized, and I continue to repeat this to my children, um, God is not a master holding his whip ready to correct me and tell me of his disappointment when I make mistakes. Instead, he is a loving, kind, generous, gentle, giving father, tending to the building of my character, fashioning me through all of life to become more like Jesus. And that's why I love this book I'm going to recommend to you. Um, Many of you know that we are friends with and love the music and the books of Andrew Peterson. Well, his son, um, Aidan Peterson, is a, a, a wonderful illustrator, and he was the illustrator of a beautiful book called The Story of God With Us. And um, I think that you will really love this book because it speaks of God with us every day. Don't, don't you think that your children... And all of the people that you know, your friends, would like to remember that. Every day, all the time, not a sparrow falls to the ground and dies without his awareness of the little bird. Much more us, every action in our lives. And um, as I look at my 70 years, I realize he has been with me every day. Sometimes I felt near to him, and sometimes I felt distant. But he was bigger, greater, wiser, leading my footsteps, teaching me through his word, and the Holy Spirit. And the more I've learned to trust Him, leave my burdens in His hands, the more peace I have, the more I can find joy and believe in His beauty and see that He was being faithful to my work, my imperfect work, and my children and my marriage, even when I didn't feel like I was doing all that much. But anyway, I want to tell you a little story that kind of gets to the heart of a verse that is about what changed my life Um, probably 53 years ago when I became a believer. But um, I'm going to tell you, first of all, um, this verse. And um, it's in Matthew, and it says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. Wouldn't it be fun if your job in life was to find the biggest pearls in the world and then Um, to be able to look at them and appreciate them and the color and the size. and Anyway, it's just another job to have, I suppose. But anyway, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, evidently. That was a job in the days of Christ. When he found one very precious pearl, he went away and sold all that he had and brought it. And that's really, that became a picture to me in my young Christian life as a a young woman of Jesus, I thought, he is my pearl of great price. I will give up everything I have to know him. I know that he is my treasure. And so many years ago when Clay and I were dating and we knew each other for years and unbeknownst to me, Clay had been praying for seven years that we would be able to date because he was serious about marrying me. But for seven years, we were just friends, and he never mentioned a word. But anyway, by this time, we were at a conference, um, a student conference, a student leadership conference in Colorado, and um, we had been dating more seriously. And he knew, and I don't know why this was a big deal to me, but he asked me out on the night of a full moon. For some reason, I always wanted to be asked to be married under a full moon. It seemed very romantic to me. Um, And so we went out to dinner, and we talked, and we were googly-eyed at one another. And then he took me um, to this wonderful little place right in the midst of this forest where there was a clearing um, on a bench in the woods. He always kind of prepared things when we used to date. And where we could see the full moon and hold hands and chat together. And after a little bit, he said, By the way, I have a gift for you tonight. 
and he pulled out a small box. And of course, it's a full moon. It's a small box the size of a ring box. And so my heart started beating, and I thought, he's going to ask me to marry him tonight. And um, so he pulled it out, and um, I opened it very slowly, and there was a lovely ring inside. It was a gold ring uh, entwined with this beautiful pearl. But he was sure to say to me, this is not an engagement ring. (laughs) So I tried really hard to go, oh, thanks for this not engagement ring. But anyway, um, he said, you know, you've been telling me that Jesus is your pearl of great price. And I wanted to give you something that would always remind you of your love for him, that you gave up everything in your life, your plans, your expectations, your heart to cherish and serve him. And I want to be an encouragement to you in your life to do that your whole life. And so it was very dear to me. And um, he was, Jesus was my all in all. I was very passionate when I um, first became a believer. And I'm still trying to be now as I continue to cultivate a seasoned relationship with him. But you'll all be so glad to know that it was a month later that he asked me to marry him under a full moon again in a very, very cold night when God just parted the clouds for five minutes when we were up at the top of this mountaintop, parted the clouds. He said, quick, let's get out. We got out of the car. Quickly, he said, will you marry me? And I said, yes. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe. No, anyway, I want, I'm not going to tell you that story. <laughs> but anyway, Clay did ask me to marry him. And he had his grandmother's wedding ring. It was a, it's a beautiful ring. I, I had it um, put into a different setting, but it's still my ring. I always panicked because I thought I was going to lose it. But he did ask me the next month to marry him. Um, but anyway, it was, it was a fun memory. Uh, when I was thinking about what verses were very dear to me. But as I get ready to go make my um, roasted salted potatoes, um, I need to come to an end to this podcast. But as I look at the next season of my life, I've really been praying, and many of you know that in my book, Own Your Life, I, I write out a prayer at the end of the book that is the prayer I want my children to read at my funeral, whoever is there, my friends, my my children. And um, I am praying right now as I look into older age, um, Lord, guide me. What do you still have for me to do? Is there anything, any place you would take me, any book you would have me write, any conference you would have me speak at, anything you want me to do online um, in real life, for you. How can I more effectively love the people you bring my way and be patient when they don't love me and learn how to be humble and gracious and long-suffering? Lord, is there a way I can live in a better way to show your light? Lord, will you forgive me of all my pettiness and, and immaturity? Will you give me joy in Christ? Lord, what are the messages that are on your heart. And so I'm really hoping that I will be able to leave a legacy of love and faith for my grandchildren to give hope and encouragement to people all over the world. I've been so blessed with knowing so many truths that have changed and shaped my life, and I feel such a blessing to share those truths. And I I long to be able to tell whoever you are out there that needs to know that you matter so much to your God, your Creator, your Father who shaped you. He cares for you. This is a hard world, and He wants to companion you through it. I want to help mothers and parents to know how incredibly it matters. All of the sleepless nights, all of the frustrations, all of the patience that your life requires of you, it matters so much that you and hopefully more people that I can encourage that to care for, to love, to teach, to show faith to children who will be the adults in the next generation is what shapes the destiny of our whole world. And we have been born at this time to bring light in the midst of people feeling dark. Your life matters. 
So I don't know how long I will get to live, but I do pray that when I see Jesus face to face, it will be from a life that is still reflecting his reality and his love, his companionship. And like Paul in 2 Timothy 4, verses 7 and 8, this is what I hope will be true about my life. Always going forward, always growing stronger, always getting a little bit more mature one day at a time. Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my race. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Oh, God, help me keep my faith. Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all of you who have longed for his appearing. That is one of my prayers. Let me pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, I am so grateful as I look back on my life and see that you were there, you were loving me, you were kind, you were gracious. Even when I couldn't see your reality, you were still faithful because you are faithful by nature. Lord, I pray that you will help my precious friends who are listening to this to hold on um, to their faith, um, that they will be able to keep their faith, that you will give them the ability to know how dearly you love them, how you see them every day, how you pray for them every day. I pray that you will help us to fight the good fight, um, to run well the race of life. Bless my precious friends, Lord, but thank you so much for blessing my life, for being my pearl of great price, for letting me know you, for letting me know your truth. I love you with all my heart, Lord Jesus, and I commit my life and my future into your hands, and I pray um, for all who are listening that they too will know the wonder of being held by the God who created the universe and the God who became a real live baby on earth to show us his love. Thank you, Lord. We pray in the precious, precious name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Well, my friends, thank you for celebrating my birthday with me. Um, I pray that you have had a good day, a good week, a good summer. Pray that you're not too hot. Um, and I hope and pray that you will feel the blessing of God in your life today. God be with you. Bye-bye. I hope you've enjoyed our time together today and that you'll join me next week. Be sure to look for more inspiration on my blog at sallyclarkson.com. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.